Hello and welcome to the Lake Oroville update for March 2024. The water level at California's second largest reservoir is currently 862 feet 6 inches above mean sea level. Thanks to a relentless series of rain and snowstorms, the water elevation has increased 21 feet since our last Lake Oroville update. The current elevation is 220 feet above minimum power pool and 37 feet below full pool. Northern California continues to get bombarded by a long series of rain and snowstorms. These storms have increased Lake Oroville's water level significantly, prompting dam managers to increase releases from Oroville Dam to maintain the current water level and to mitigate flood risks. In this episode, we'll start out with reviewing the Lake Oroville statistics. Then we're going to take a look at not only how much water is being released from Oroville, but exactly how these water releases work. This is going to be a fun episode. I'm going to get deep into the inner workings of the Oroville Thermolito Water Management Complex, so stay tuned. Before we get started though, please do me a favor, hit that like button, leave me a comment. This is Time Bomb, let's get started. Today, I'm going to give a pretty thorough overview of the statistics, but don't worry. If you're eager to jump ahead, I've organized this video into chapters. This way, you can easily skip to the section where I discuss the process of water discharge from Oroville Dam. This is a chart of Lake Oroville's water level for the 2024 water year that began on October 1, 2023. At the start of the water year, Lake Oroville's elevation was at 833 feet. From there, the water level declined to a low point of 811 feet 6 inches on December 17th. Today, the water level has risen to 862 feet 6 inches. That's an increase of over 50 feet since that low point less than three months ago. The current water elevation of 862 feet is 54 feet above the 808 foot average water level for this time of year. The highest water level at Lake Oroville was recorded on February 11, 2017 at 902 and a half feet. The record low for the reservoir was set on September 30, 2021, when the level declined to 628 feet 8 inches. When we look at previous year's water levels, we see the Lake Oroville Reservoir is 23 feet above the water level at this same time last year. The elevation is 118 feet above the water level in 2022 and 148 feet above the water level in 2021. Now remember, 2021 is when Oroville hit its all-time record low. Today's water level is two feet above the water level on this same date in the historic year of 2017. That's the year the water level rose so high it damaged Oroville's main and emergency spillways. The current capacity of the Oroville Reservoir is 2,979,000 acre feet. That's 85% of the reservoir's total capacity. The average capacity for this state is 2,289,000 acre feet. The record low for the reservoir was set on September 30th, 2021 at 787,000 acre feet. That was only 22.5% of full pool capacity. Full capacity, often referred to as full pool, is 3.5 million acre feet. Before I get into how releases from Oroville Dam works, I think we should review all of the components that make up the Oroville Thermolito Water Management Complex. The entire complex is centered around Lake Oroville, the primary storage facility within the California State Water Project. Oroville does not just pr provide water storage. It serves a variety of purposes, including hydroelectric power generation, flood control, environmental management, irrigation, and of course, water supply. The complex includes several major components, each serving specific roles within the system. The main component, of course, is Oroville Dam, the tallest dam in the United States. It creates Lake Oroville by blocking and impounding water from the Feather River. Located in the base of Oroville Dam, we have the Edward Hyatt Power Plant, an underground hydroelectric facility that generates electricity by using water from Lake Oroville. It's one of the largest hydroelectric plants in California. Also located beneath the dam is the Low Flow River Outlet System, also known as the River Valve Outlet System. This outlet is designed to release small amounts of water from a low point in Lake Oroville. 
When water levels in the lake decline below 642 feet, water cannot enter the Hyatt Power Plant's intakes. Therefore, no water can be released into the Feather River to maintain fish habitats and to meet downstream water rights. The low flow river outlet is designed to work even in these very low water conditions. Just downstream from the dam, we have the Thermalito Complex, a series of facilities designed to generate additional hydroelectric power as well as pump water back into Lake Oroville for reuse. The Thermalito Complex includes several components. First up, we have the Thermalito Diversion Dam and Power Plant. This dam diverts water from the Feather River into the Thermalito Power Canal, where it can be used for irrigation needs or allowed to flow into the Thermalito Four Bay. The associated power plant generates electricity as part of this process. The Thermalito Four Bay is a small reservoir that acts as a kind of regulating storage facility. It ensures a steady flow of water is available for power generation or for pumping back into Lake Oroville. After the four bay, the water flows into the Thermalito pumping generating plant. This facility can perform two tasks. It can pump water back into Lake Oroville for reuse, and it can generate electricity as water flows downhill from the four bay into the after bay. The Thermalito after bay is a larger body of water compared to the four bay. The after bay acts as a holding area for additional irrigation and water that was used in power generation at the Thermalito power generation plant. Next up is the Thermalito After Bay Release Station. The release station manages and regulates water flows from the Thermalito After Bay back into the Feather River or towards agricultural irrigation systems. And finally, we have the Feather River Fish Hatchery, located on the Feather River below the Oroville Dam near the town of Oroville. The hatchery is designed to replace the salmon and steelhead spawning habitats that were lost when the dam was constructed. When dam managers at the Department of Water Resources decide to release water from Lake Oroville, they have a few options. First up is the Edward Hyatt Power Plant. This is the main facility for water releases. The plant generates electricity by allowing water from Lake Oroville to flow through its turbines. The water is then released back into the Feather River downstream. The amount of water released through the Hyatt Power Plant can be adjusted based on electricity demand and water management needs. When fully operational, up to 17,000 cubic feet per second can be released from the Hyatt Power Plant. The next option is to use the spillways. Lake Oroville is equipped with two spillways, the main and the emergency. These two spillways are very different. The main spillway is sometimes referred to as the Flood Control Outlet, or FCO. The FCO is a concrete line chute that is 3,055 feet long and 179 feet wide. It's designed to have a capacity of 296,000 cubic feet per second. Outflows from the main spillway can be controlled using the radial gates located at the top of the spillway. These gates can be raised or lowered to control the flow of water entering the spillway. Oroville's other spillway, the Emergency Spillway, is 1,730 feet long and has a capacity of 350,000 cubic feet per second. This spillway is activated when the water level rises above 901 feet in elevation. That's the spillway's crest elevation. Unlike the main spillway, the Emergency Spillway is not gated, so water flows uncontrolled over the spillway and into the Feather River. So dam managers do not actually make a decision to use the emergency spillway. When the water levels get high enough, it literally spills over the crest and tumbles down into the Feather River. If the water is released from the Hyatt Power Plant, further decisions are required. The water can be allowed to continue to flow downstream into the Feather River, or it may be channeled using the Thermalito Diversion Dam into the Thermalito Four Bay. Once the water is in the Thermalito complex, it can be used for power generation in the Diversion Dam power plant. It can be released into the Thermalito canal, where it can be used for agricultural irrigation or municipal and industrial water supply. It can be used to generate more hydropower at the Thermalito pumping generating facility. Or it could be pumped back up into Lake Oroville, where the entire process begins again. Now you know why these systems are called complex. 
because they are truly complex, not just in name, but in the vast array of functions they can perform. Water is almost always being released from Lake Oroville to generate electricity through the Hyatt power plant. The only time water is not flowing through Hyatt is during times of maintenance. In fact, the power plant is off right now due to the river valve outlet system project. It's only generating power in the evenings and weekend hours for the safety of construction clues. The power plant was also taken offline in the summer of 2021 due to low water levels. This was the first and only time the plant was shut due to low water levels. Here is a chart of outflows from Oroville for the 2024 water year. Water releases from October 1st through January 29th were all through the Hyatt power plant. Then on January 30th, the California Department of Water Resources began releasing water from Lake Oroville using the main spillway at a rate of 6,000 cubic feet per second. That was due to the rising water levels and the approaching set of atmospheric rivers. At this time, the lake was at 842 feet in elevation or 77% of capacity. The following day, releases for the, from the main spillway were increased to 12,000 cubic feet per second. As this water flowed down the Feather River, 650 cubic feet per second was routed through the Feather River through the city of Oroville. The remaining 11,350 cubic feet per second was routed through the Thermolito complex, where it's generated some hydropower and was eventually released from the Thermolito after bay into the Feather River below the city of Oroville. The outflow rate was adjusted a few times until releases from the main spillway were stopped on February 7th due to reduced inflow into Lake Oroville. Releases from the main spillway resumed on February 16th and have remained in place since that time. Today, the rate is set to 14,000 cubic feet per second. Now, I expect these releases to end in the next few days unless another major storm hits Northern California. Hey, that's all I have for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with another video next week. In the meantime, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.